All right, so excited to have Kyle Swanson, a good friend of mine, for uh, quite a while now. And uh, so thank you for taking the time today. This is the first in-person, in-studio um, episode ever in the history of the Championship Leadership Podcast of like a total of nine or ten episodes. So thanks for taking time, Kyle. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, man. This is great. I listen to all your podcasts, so I'm happy that we're on the air together and yeah back in the office just like uh the good old days yeah just like the good old days so a little backstory maybe not that you guys care listening but uh kyle and i uh so we're in rochester minnesota uh basically our hometown um or where we live not necessarily where we grew up but um i was in the insurance business kyle was just starting in the real estate business and um that's how we initially met he bought a fourplex was looking for some insurance it was actually an internet lead and uh, and we've ended up being uh, great friends over the, over. I don't know when was when was that when? So that must have been 2010, 2011. At least, and it would say the, it was less than it was before that because I think we bought we bought a rental property together, and I think that was probably, in 2010. Okay, so it must have been at least 2009. Yeah, I know it was when the the Obama tax credit. Was yeah, there. that's right. And yep. you were the lowest internet lead. That's <laughs> yeah, of internet course. The two lowest price. Had I not been the lowest price, uh, we would not be sitting here today. So price doesn't matter. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't be fooled. Um, but yeah, no. So thank you, um, Kyle. Since then, 2009, um, they had the Realty Edge team. And how, tell us about your team, I guess. Yeah so. yeah, so, yeah. so I started in real estate in 2009 when I moved down here to Rochester. And, and um Kind of how it started was I graduated from college, I was looking for a job, and uh, I got sick of reading the books about how to make money. I'm like, let's go make money, right? And I was applying for all kinds of jobs because I wanted to be a stockbroker. Well, in 2009, the finance world was uh, not doing real hot, so I'm not hiring a lot of people. Um, so I was driving around, I called up uh, now my, my business partner, Dan Kingsley, because he had a a condo for sale, but I thought it was a whole apartment complex. And I don't know why I thought it was an apartment <laughs> yeah. complex, but I was just out of college yeah. and that's what the textbook said it'd be. So yeah. that's what, that's Dream what big. I was going to do. And uh, Dan's, I'm like, I need a contract for deed. I can't get a job or I can't get a job. So I can't get a mortgage. Um, Dan's like, Oh, I talked to a lot of people. Send me a resume. So I sent him my resume and uh, he just gave it to our broker at the time. And, Next day, the broker calls me up. He's like, hey, you want to be a realtor? I'm like, uh, you offer me a job? <laughs> He's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. yeah. What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you sell houses. I'm like, yeah. okay. And I, I had no idea what a realtor did at the time. Yeah. And so then, uh, so that's kind of how I got into it. Uh, that was in 2009. Um, and then... They thought Dan and I were, were best buds, right? Because he got me into the business because I talked to him on the phone one time. Um, so then they put us in this little office, like one of us could back out. Literally a tiny office. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> a little <laughs> yeah, closet. Remember, yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, Nate was there. He had to sit out in the hallway if you wanted to talk to both <laughs> yeah, of us at the same pretty time. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, and so then uh, I'm like, Dan, what do we do? And, and he's like, he gives me the phone book. And he's like, start calling your leads. <laughs> so that's what we did. Uh, we called through the leads A to Z, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, so let's see, that's 2009. And then we're like, well, now we got all these buyers. Let's start sharing some, right? So we started sharing buyers. And we're like, well, we need our name on more signs. So we're like, all right, let's start sharing listings. Okay. So then in 2011 is when uh, we're like, well, why don't we just team up and start real and at that time, teams were just kind of making a move, but not really. Yeah. Uh, and so there wasn't a whole lot of um, layout as far as a roadmap to yeah. to get there. But but uh, over the, the course since 2011, now we're you know we're still the team with with Dan and I. Um, we're at a different brokerage now. Um, let's see, we have three three agents on on the team besides Dan and I. So there's five of us. Uh, then we've got Tammy and Molly that are, are running the show here. Awesome. So there's seven of you total, huh? Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, from 
from the beginning, 2009, really it's been quite a quick progression for you guys. Um, you know, if, if you look at it from, you know, in comparison to others and what other realtors are doing out there, you guys are definitely leaders absolutely in this market. And I would imagine even in the state of Minnesota and even in the country. And, and, uh, speaking of that, you were, uh, you were the 30 under 30, right? The top 30 under 30. When was that? That was 2014. 2014. 2014. So you started 2009 and, and uh, in five short years, uh, two, one of the top 30 realtors under the age of 30 in the country. Yep, in the U.S. and Canada. Oh, U.S. and Canada. So <laughs> Big deal. Oh, yeah, it is a big deal. I didn't, I didn't realize that it actually included Canada as well. So um, w that brings us to, you know, the name of this podcast is the Championship Leadership podcast and I always like to ask what what comes to mind for you when you think of that championship leadership so I guess yeah what really comes to mind is is um, growing like growth like helping people grow like if you're gonna lead them I, I always feel like you should lead them to grow like you're gonna lead your kids to to eventually leave the house and leave the nest you should if you're going to lead somebody you should lead them to be able to flourish on their own i love that because there's a lot of leaders or you, you could say even even if we were to look real you know realty teams right or even brokers you know if there's a scarcity mentality of i don't want to lose any of my people you might not be in the mentality of getting them to be the best that they can be, which would also mean investing in them so that they can grow and learn and, and really become great realtors, right? Because you have a scarcity mentality of like, well, if I do that, then they're just going to take everything they got and they're going to go somewhere else, which, they, which might happen and I think probably already has happened for you. But at the same time, you also know that if you don't do that, you're not going to go where you want to go as a team and, and you guys have a big, huge vision, obviously, just to see the growth and where you're at, that just really shows. And I know you have always um, invested heavily in yourself. Uh, you, Dan, actually your team is where right now? Uh, down in Texas doing uh, real estate training. Yeah, so they're, so they're growing, they're expanding and uh, getting better. And I'm guessing you guys uh, invest in your team so that they can do that. Yeah, I mean, it's, our goal now, as we've progressed through through the different models and how everything works, um, is to grow a whole bunch of real estate agents to be super solid, reliable, trusted experts in the field. Um, so, I mean, that's why we sent everybody down to Texas to get really good training. Every week we're hammer home training. Um, I mean, that's, that's kind of our vision now is to grow, to grow agents, to be, to be successful on their own. And so where did that come from? Um, as, as meaning like, has there been some people in your life that, that have kind of shown you that path? Is that something that you've kind of found on your own or just naturally intuitively knew that you just, you know, if you want to continue to get where you want to go up, like you said, you already have you talked a little bit about the vision that you have. Um, having how many agents do you do you see building realty at into um so uh, sky's the limit right yeah. but as as we grow you know and, and agents are able to step out on their own we want them to be able to build teams and and we know we're going to get what we want by helping others get what they want yeah right so that's kind of the thing like if if we can help agents be really success, successful, um, kind of where it came from is is when we switched over this new brokerage. Because um, right before this, we were independent and running our own brokerage. Yeah. And um, so I was, I was trying to develop all these systems to um, you know grant everybody ownership and, and be able to buy in and all this stuff. Um, and now the new brokerage allows us to um, allows people to, to buy in and gives ownership and everything. So it allows us to be able to, to grow these people and 
and basically let them out into the world and we still are part of their business, right? So um, that's kind of where that came from. And by doing that, it just makes, it makes so much sense. Like it just makes us feel so much better um, about growing the business. Cause I mean, there's, you know, a lot of people at uh, other brokerages or, you know, take Gary Keller, for instance, like he's like, well, if you start a team or if you join a team, you got to make sure that, um, you know, the, the agents, the buyer's agents and the seller's agents don't have their name on all their stuff, right? Or they don't, can't build their own business because then they're just going to grow and leave you, right? Yeah. Um, well, that's, that just seems like a, the wrong way to do it. Um, if it feels wrong in my gut, I know that it, yeah. it's definitely the wrong thing to do. Yeah. And I just don't feel like that's the way to do it for people. So, um, by, by doing it this way, I feel good about it. Let people get out there and, and be really successful and I'll be there to, to help them out. Right. Yeah, I love that. So you talk about the gut, right? Listening to your gut, which I would, you know, inside of what we do, man, well, shield man, and powered by the prosperity revolution, we always talk about the voice or listen to the voice, which is another way of saying listen to your gut. Um, have you always listened to that? Or can you think of times when you maybe have ignored the gut? And uh, because my experience has been when I've listened, like it's worked out, right? And you can call it what you want. You call it, some people call it God, some people just call it like, that intuition that you have, you got the voice, whatever it is. But you know, when you listen, usually uh, you are guided down the right path. And when you ignore it, a lot of times, um, you know, it doesn't work out the way you would have wished it would have. Yeah. Um, so I mean, yeah. Have you always been able to do that? Is that something that you've learned over time too, as well, or where does that come from for you? That's really something that I've learned over time, um, just from. Failure, failure, failure. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, I've just experienced it, like, over the last couple of years, it's been, like, I've really noticed if I, if I feel like something isn't quite right, um, like, a little bit not right on my end, it's way more not right on somebody else's end. And then things explode, right? So, what, a lot of times it's dealing with... Um, like our agents and stuff. Like if, if I'm like, ah, oh, that doesn't seem quite right, but you know, it's, it'll be fine, whatever. You know, week later, something just exploded, right? And it yeah. comes right back to that. Yeah. Uh, so, and it, it's just in getting in tune with, with that. Yeah. It's really helped yeah. a lot. Um, and it's kind of like, if it feels, if it feels right to me, yeah. um, then it's going to feel right to somebody else. Yeah. Right. So if it doesn't, then it's like, you no, know, change it up. Yeah. Right? Like, don't do that. Yeah. No. So. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's good because um, to be a championship leader, right? The, the championship leaders, whether you look in the NFL, it could be like Bill Belichick is kind of the top of the top, right? He's he's built what he's built in, in New England and eight Super Bowls, five wins. Nick Saban in college. Um, I'm sure you're a hockey guy, so you probably have some hockey names that you could think of and throw out there um, of just champions and, and leaders in, at a championship, very high level, the best of the best. You know, all of those guys have learned and failed through their failures, right? There's, you take the experiences that you've got and you're constantly reevaluating, reassessing, and, and not letting those lessons uh, go by for not, right? taking advantage of those experiences to help you to get where you want to go um, that next step. Yeah. Like we've learned so much more from our failures. Like we've had a thousand of them, right? We've yeah. wasted so much money on so many little shiny objects um, <laughs> that, that <laughs> it really makes me laugh um, because otherwise I'd cry, you know? <laughs> uh, you know, but it's, it's like you learn from all your failures and you learn from your successes but a lot of times your successes, you can't rely on those forever. Like that, that stuff is always changing. It, it kind of seems like if, if you're doing something that's working really well, you got to continue to improve that. You can't just stay status quo. Yeah. Um, but I do know if you failed at something um, because of a certain failure, 
don't do that again because that's not going to yeah. work ever yeah. again. Right? Yeah, it's kind of like the uh, it's kind of like my my dad that still doesn't have a cell phone or the the agent that's been around for thirty years that just will not accept that technology is a part of life nowadays. Or, yeah. Yeah, not being willing to change or grow um, definitely is going to leave you in the dust. Um, let's talk. So you're from Roseau, Minnesota. For those of you in the, in the hockey world, which I got to talk to you because uh, I was just visiting a good friend of mine. Shout out to Manny Meyer in, uh, in Miami. He trains a bunch of uh, uh, hockey guys down there. And um, But so Roseau is like the hotbed of hockey, and you grew up in, in – in, it's like almost on the Canadian border in northern Minnesota. And uh, what, what can you, what are some experiences or lessons you can learn from just being in that kind of a culture? Like I, I'm kind of jealous because yeah, I've always been a sports and athletics guy and to be in a place like that where, you know, you're just in this town and I can imagine like hockey is just kind of everything up there, right? There's not a lot yeah. else up there, but yeah. up there um, in that area with you. And, and I grew up in a small town, northern Wisconsin, and uh, there's just not a lot else. But when you can have something like that, where it's just kind of, I imagine your world almost revolved around it, especially growing up and in high school and the dream of winning the state championship and just the history. And then you got War Road down the, just down the road and huge rivalries. And, and uh, the, you know, essentially like you were, your culture, you were brought up yeah. around other teams that were winning championships and that's what you want to do. And it's just kind of who you were for a while. Like I can relate to that a little bit, but yeah, can you talk about that? Maybe what, how that growing up in that culture in that town around hockey and the history that was there and how that maybe has transferred over to what you do here today too. Yeah. So a little bit of background on, on Rosa. Yeah. Um, so Rosa ha has the most state titles in hockey in Minnesota, I think. Edina just tied them now, but but Rosa's a uh, a town of you know thirty two hundred people, right? So that's yeah, and they compete in the highest level of hockey in the state. So um, I always say like when you're born, you know you, you're born with skates on. That's how you get out of the womb, <laughs> right? Um, but the mentality there is is even though it's a super small school, you're expected to win, and you expect to win because you've seen everybody else win, yeah. right? And so, um, and it's, it's not a doubt of whether or not you can, or you can compete against these schools with, you know, 100,000 plus people for yeah. population. Yeah. It's just a fact that you're gonna go out there and, and you're gonna win. Yeah. Right? And that's, that whole culture is just like, obviously it's, it's just so embedded in Rozo that it's one of those things where it takes time to do, right? It's, yeah. Years in yeah, for sure. Um, but just, you know, and then being on a team and relying on all that stuff, the, when people that are on a team, they really understand the concept of, of relying on people and supporting people. Right. Um, just like you rely on your hockey players, you, you rely on your, your teammates, you know, you, bringing that into the business world, you really understand um, that you got somebody's back, right? You're not going to flake out on somebody because especially if they're on your team, I mean, you guys live or die yeah, together, yeah. right? Um, and that's, and that's great. And and Dan came from the army, right? And yeah, he, absolutely. He yeah. As well and, and he's um, a ranger, went through ranger school. And so, yeah, elite to be elite right there. Right. So I grew up playing hockey. He went to the army and yeah. now, now it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's so, like you said, uh, you know, what you said was it's this town of 3,200 literally in the middle of nowhere and competing with all these huge twin city schools. Like you said, Edina, I mean, these schools that have, I don't know what, two to 3000 kids a class. Right. And that's how many people you had total in your town. Right. And so it's just this total mindset and mentality. It's like, it's not even a question of whether you can. It's like, it's almost a question of just when, when you're going to do it, when you're going to win the next championship or like, and so, and that doesn't, yeah, that doesn't happen over a short period of time. It's just something that's built and ingrained. And like you said, you're coming out of the womb with hockey skates. It's just like this, it's just what's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, 
you're going to play hockey and you're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just, I mean, I, that really to me is, uh, that's cool because I, you know, I grew up as a kid and I wanted to win a, a state basketball championship. And we had, you know, our town, small town, and the teams were tops in the state. And so I was fifth, sixth grade and going to these games and I was just imagining myself when I was in high school doing the same thing. And, um, and yeah, to see how you could take that and then transfer that over, just like you said with Dan, um, your partner. Yeah, he was in he was in the army and he went through Ranger School, which is like one of the top leadership schools in all of the military. There's there's Navy SEALs and and uh, soldiers from all the other branches that come through Army Ranger School because of the reputation that it has as this tough, challenging um, school that is that is not for the faint of heart that has the best of the best coming through because of what it does and how it, it, it trains you guys to be leaders. So to see those two different, you know, you know you're coming from one culture that's kind of got that same uh, level of uh, um, success. And then you've got another one in Dan and how powerful that is. And so really you stop, think and look back if you've ever even done that to, to figure out how you got here. It's not by chance. It's, uh, you know, and you could attribute a lot of it to the experiences that you had coming into it. Yeah. And yeah, that's one thing when you look at people and they're successful and, you know, you always think, oh, that person had a silver spoon in their mouth or whatever, right? Yeah. And it's like, well, you know, how did they really get there? Yeah. Like, there's a lot of people born with silver spoons in their mouths and there's a lot of people that completely fail, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So they did something right. Um, you know, another thing coming back to Rosa is, all those people that are really good hockey players, they grow up, they go to the NHL, they become all stars, and a lot of them come back to Rosa. Yeah, and they yeah. like when I was a youth hockey player, I was I was coached by NHL. <laughs> so cool, right? As a little kid, oh my goodness. Yeah, you don't think anything of it. Yeah, right? yeah it's just normal because right? their kids are same <laughs> yeah. as yours. You're like, hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. Uh, it's just uh, yeah, you don't know any difference, so you just um, you know if if that's such a gift that you were given that you didn't even realize until probably, you know, later down, down the road yeah. Yeah. and that uh, many don't get to experience. So it's awesome that you're able to take that and utilize that inside of what you do. Um, let's talk about some challenging times in your life. And I, I'm thinking of one right now. I know that you were in uh, a bad accident in high school, car accident. And um, how, how did that shape who you are and where you're at and how you show up and, and maybe even inside of your business, obviously, probably inside of your family as well. And yeah, um, yeah. So I guess when I was eighteen, um, I was in a really bad car accident. You know, it's like the old drinking and driving situation. I wasn't driving, but it was it was related to that. And uh, I spent thirty days in the hospital. I was in a coma for two weeks. Had sixty staples in my head. Broke my vertebrae and three vertebrae and all that kind of stuff. Um, Tons of broken bones. Um, lucky to be alive. Yeah, yeah, super lucky to be alive. Really lucky. Um, and it happened on April Fool's Day, so nobody believed oh, wow. that, right? So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so then coming out of that, you know, I woke up, I couldn't walk, talk, or eat. And, and uh, I we used to do a lot of stupid stuff in high school. So yeah. Yeah. I, I remember sitting in the bed, and I looked up, and I'm like, oh, I'm in a hospital. I'm like, oh, crap, it's me. Uh, it's either going to be me or my buddy and it yeah. happened to be me this time. So, um, but coming out of it, we're like, I just, if I'm ever having like a rough day or stuff like that, I'm just so thankful, you know, that I'm still here, like yeah. this could be completely different. My, now we just had a, uh, you know, a baby boy yeah. uh, a couple of weeks ago. So a new little got, hockey player. Got that hockey player. Skates were on. Skates, skates, skates <laughs> on. Power through thousands. Uh, but like, you just, you got to be so thankful for it. Uh, and somebody always has it worse than you do. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And like, you can complain all you want, but get over it. Yeah. Um, just, you know, and they always say make the best out of every day, right? But, yeah. But still, like, um, you just got to be happy with what you got and, and keep improving, you know, yeah. and I know you've touched on it like every day, just get a little bit better, get a yeah. little bit better. Yeah. Um, and so if you can do that and you, the one thing that 
that we're constantly doing is tracking stuff, right? So yeah. tracking all the numbers. So if you can track all your numbers and then a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better, um, at the end or at the end of the year, whenever you look back at it, you're like, geez, we did come a long ways, come a long way. right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's important to uh, track, know where you're at. And uh, and like you said, a big, big piece is to definitely be able to look back or just stop and to take time to look back. Because if you're, care if you're not careful, like you can get in the mode of just continually pushing and pushing and pushing and never really taking the time to look back and appreciate where you've come from. And, uh, you know, that's just can, that, that can burn you out, that can burn your team out maybe more importantly, something, you know, a lot of times maybe your team doesn't necessarily have the drive that you do because it's, you know, because it's your team, not theirs. Um, but I imagine, you know, with being the leader that you are, how important is it for you to help create that culture kind of like in Rozo of, you know, this isn't just my team, this is our team, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, and I'm not going to be the one that tell, tells you, you know, this is my team or this is Dan, my, our team, you know, yep. um, it's always our team. Right. And you know, the agents will be like, no, it's, it's Kyle's team or <laughs> Kyle and Dan's team, whatever. It's like, no, it's not. It's, it's our team. Uh, I'm not your boss. We're in this together. Yeah. Um, we're going to succeed or fail together. You know, um, that's, that's like the strongest thing to get across is that, you know, I got your back, you got mine, we're in this together. And I mean, it's, it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, that's huge. It's huge in any successful championship organization or team is, is to get that buy-in and, and to create that culture. And, and uh, you guys have definitely done that. It's been fun to watch and see uh, the growth. Like I said, I was, uh, I kind of, I met you right in the, in the beginning and um, used to come over for coffee when I was kind of in the beginning of my insurance business and I sold that earlier this year, but um, literally well, the office that we're in right now is like some of those offices were about half the size yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. you know, just to see where you're at now and, and, uh, and the growth that you've had and continue to have. So um, I'd like to finish this up what is what's been the most challenging so on the road i would definitely consider you and dan again realty edge as championship leadership you guys are you Thanks. know you're the best you, you're the top and you continue to push you don't settle for that but as we've talked about a little bit you know i always think that you know your true character is never really built um until you've been tested or in some adverse situations. So what, what can you look back to from the beginning of when you guys, you and Dan first came together to today? Um, what was that moment where you could have very easily, you know, like how I like to say is you could have went left, which is the path that most would take and either, either like throw in all the chips and say, screw it and go do something else, or maybe split apart and go on your own versus staying the course to where you are today and continuing to grow and build and, and uh, push um, Realty Edge to where they're at. Is there a moment that you could think of? Uh, yeah, so one of the, the things that really helped Dan and I solidify at the beginning is that we both came in at 7 a.m., went through scripts till 8 a.m., replied to emails and texts or whatever for the next half hour, which there wasn't any because it was in the beginning. <laughs> and, and then get on the phone and, and we would really bust our butts all day long. Yeah. And we, would, we could see each other um, were very hardworking and like we recognized our character was, was similar we respected each other um and very loyal so that's kind of one thing where where has helped dan and i the whole time we've been together is i mean we're we're really like a business marriage like yeah um i fully trust him he fully trusts me yeah and it has helped us like whenever against the wall like we know that 
at the end of the day, we're still together, yeah. right? Like yeah. if, if we're like, we, you know, when we decided to go on our own, um, you know, nothing, we've never really made drastic moves overnight, right? So everything was, has been like a progression, progression. Um, and if there's anything that we want to get done, whether it's Dan wants to get something done or I want to get something done, we slowly implement it into each other's minds, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. that's their idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the, you know, when we, we, when we, when we went independent, um, that was a big move as a completely, completely changed, um, a little bit of, of, of things and, you know, we just felt like it was the right thing. And, and we made sure that both of us were on board. Uh, when we came back on, on, to, on to this new brokerage, we both were both in it. Like he wasn't unsure. I wasn't unsure. Um, you know, we make sure that, that both of us are completely on board before we're going to do something. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, there's been challenging times when the deals go sideways or, agents go rogue or whatever. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, Dan and I know that we're still here and yeah. the team's going to still be here. Yeah. Uh, we'll get through whenever. Um, the, now that what we've really realized is that as you grow, you never quit with challenges. Like, right. You always like, oh, I, once I get there, I'm going to be done. <laughs> once I get there, I'm going to be done. No, yeah. it just gets bigger and bigger challenges. And now it's, now it's a, a different challenge, right? Now it's it's growing a, as many agents as we can. And so it's like, crap, how do we do this? It's yeah. a different, you know, a different business model. Um, so that's that's really our challenge right now. Um, and we'll get through it. I mean, we're we're constantly learning, so I'll be able to do it. And, yeah. and um, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, there's never a status quo. Yeah, I love it because, yeah, the challenges never end. And that's the day that you can realize that is the day that you quit looking for them to end, right? Because you're like, oh, if I can just get here, everything's going to be fine. I'm never going to have a problem ever again. And that's just not reality. And, and so yeah, it's huge to speak to that. Um, they only get bigger. Uh, the challenges, that is, they only get bigger and harder, probably, the more that you grow or they become different. Because now you have, you know, before it was just two of you, now you got a team, and now there's just, with that comes different challenges. And uh, it's really a testament to you and Dan, because um, it's hard. I mean, if for anyone out there that's had a partner in business, like, you guys are not, it's not common for you guys to succeed and, and stay together as long as you have and to work as well together and to have that trust and to just know that you both have each other's back and and it's just so important like you said to you've always made decisions together you've never rushed into anything you've been very clear on what you want and why it matters and, and you've been able to move together through that and that's obviously why you've had the success that you've had so um, I appreciate you sharing that and I appreciate you uh, taking the time today to be here with us. Maybe one one last thing. Do you have any anything else that you would want to add to the listeners that, that's on the top of your mind that uh, for anyone trying to uh, get to where they want to go in life and business? And so the one thing that I never when we when Dan and I started, like we did, we never knew about, and maybe it wasn't a thing back then, but coaching, like people are gonna help you yeah. get to where you want to go. It's unbelievable how we went from where we were, you know, maybe selling like 50 houses a year, or whatever, to in a couple of years selling 130 houses a year, right? Um, people are there to help you. And it's amazing how well a coach can help you get there. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was, that move itself was ginormous for us. Yeah. And that, yeah, I mean, I can remember, I don't know how, how early it was, but it was from a pretty early time when you guys had been investing in coaches and a lot of people are maybe a little bit small minded in that, like they can't see what would be really possible for them by investing that money in, right? They could get caught up on the money that it would cost versus what that's actually going to create for you and, and open up for you. And I can imagine that, um, like you said, you know, it's been well worth it. Plus probably a ton more, uh, to be, to, 
to be open to that and to realize that and to have the faith that, you know, if, hey, we have to, we have to invest in ourselves. There's things that you don't know that you don't know that are gonna, you know, that others do that they can help you go to where you want to faster. So yeah, that's, that's huge. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, good man. Um, tell everybody how they can kind of uh, follow you and what you got going on uh, as we wrap this up. Uh, let's see. So if you have any questions about me or my business, you can always email me at Kyle at the Uh, or follow our team on Facebook. Uh, let's see Facebook slash the realty edge team, uh, facebook.com slash the realty edge team. Um, or just look us up the realty edge team, Rochester, Minnesota. Love it. Appreciate it. And yeah, we'll put all those links inside of the show notes for you guys too. And so any of you realtors out there looking, hoping to build a team or have always wanted to, or, or just never really known what to do or how to do it or how to go about it, or you just want to uh, uh, check in and see how they've come from where they were at to where they are today, uh, give them a check out on social media and uh, appreciate you being here. And thanks, Kyle. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Have, have a good day.